Vi ska bede en gang til sang din. Amen. Uh, so our saint for today is Peter Canisius, uh, doctor of the church, confessor, and um, a tremendous figure in uh, the religious um, uh, the, 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 the religious wars in Europe, the Protestantism breakaway, big figure at um, implementing the Council of Trent and in saving souls and even entire countries uh, from falling into the errors of Protestantism uh, in the 16th century. Uh, so St. Peter Canisius was born in the Netherlands in 1521. Uh, he studied at uh, the Cologne University and earned a master's degree when he was 19 years old. So very brilliant. Uh, and he joined, uh, shortly after that, the newly formed uh, Society of Jesus, became a Jesuit. And this was just, uh, I think, six years after they were founded. Uh, Peter Canisius joins the order, and he entered uh, under St. Peter Faber, one of the original uh, companions of Ignatius. So uh, St. Peter Canisius would have a, um, a tremendous impact on the, uh, the growth of, of the, uh, the Jesuits. That order would be instrumental in uh, founding houses and seminaries and so on. Uh, so he, he joins his Jesuit order, and he is a, a very gifted teacher, and in fact, he became well-known uh, early on uh, because of his work specifically on, uh, with Cyril of Alexandria and St. Leo the Great. He retranslated their works and kind of reintroduced them. Um, and we think about it at the time, you, you, you want to know about Cyril of Alexandria, what did he write? Oh, go look at it on, uh, you know, uh, Wikipedia or the Catholic Encyclopedia or whatever it is. That stuff didn't exist 500 years ago. You had to actually go to a library where they had the scroll and you had to know Greek or Aramaic or whatever it was. That, that's where, what we have today. This is the kind of people that it came from, the men who did that work. Um, so St. Peter Canisius uh, uh, was, was a, um, a scholar already and uh, he was teaching, he was a scholar, he was uh, joining the Jesuits, became a priest. And in, in addition to all these duties he was doing, uh, he would also find time to visit the sick and the imprisoned. That's what the, the, the love of Christ does in the hearts of people. No matter how busy they are, they always want to find time uh, for others. Uh, so he would eventually end up serving as a theological consultant in one of the first sessions of the Council of Trent. This would be 1547. Uh, so, so he's not even 30 years old. Um, and the, the Council of Trent would last for 18 years, and he would serve in this capacity uh, early on. Uh, later, uh, he would be commissioned by Pope, um, who was it, Paul III, to take these reforms of the Council of Trent and take them into Germany and, and work uh, to stop the tide of Protestantism that was overcoming it. Now, it'd be good, it'd be good to pause here, because this is, this is really what Peter Canisius did for the rest of his life, is he fought against the, 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 um, the growing heresy in the church at that time. Uh, Martin Luther uh, would um, nail his 95 theses uh, in, in 1519 against the Wittenberg door, and, and that was not the start of, of the problems in Europe. By the time Martin Luther comes around, Europe had been in trouble for 300 years. Uh, it started in the, in the early 1300s, 1309, with the Avignon Papacy, right? The Pope left Rome, the Pope was in France, and increasingly subject to political pressures from the French king. That very much weakened the credibility of the papacy in the eyes of every other country. The Pope is the plaything of the French, right? Was, was how it was looked upon for nearly 70 years. Uh, then when the Pope went back to Italy, immediately you had the Great Western Schism, and that was for another 50 or so years. Uh, there were like up to three popes at a time. The, the papacy was, again, very much weakened. The Great Western Schism ended in 1419 or 1417, uh, but then what did you have throughout the whole 1400s? Um, the Renaissance. That, that wasn't entirely bad, but with the Renaissance, Entering into that time of a weakened respect for the papacy, uh, kind of a, a weakened respect for theology and philosophy, you had the rise of humanism. Humanism is more of a focus on man, less of a focus on God. And much, much of our actually current culture, its roots are in the, the Renaissance uh, attitudes of the 1400s. So all of this combined and came to a head with the, uh, uh, Martin Luther, the rise of Protestantism, which isn't really... <clears throat> That was more political than anything else. It was about power. Who gets to control what people think? Because what people think determines what they do. Uh, and if you're the one controlling what they think, you're the one controlling what they do. That's what Protestantism is all about. 
So, uh, so this, this is kind of the backdrop. This is the setting into which Peter Canisius um, finds himself very providentially put uh, by the wisdom of God. He was perfectly suited for this. So he had uh, a, a, an excellent mind, an excellent education. He knew theology, he knew philosophy, and he was there for, at, at the Council of Trent itself. He knew the reforms. The Pope sent him into Germany. Please do something. Um, Germany was just falling apart. Uh, uh, it was just a, a, a terrible state. And of course, you're, you're talking about there were plagues. Uh, people were dying. 30% um, of the population was gone. And especially among priests, who were the priests staying behind taking care of people during these plagues? It was the good ones, right? The, the, the priests who didn't care, those are the ones that went off, right? And then, then they came back later. So uh, Germany was not in a good state. Many of the countries, as, as I mentioned, were, were in, in difficult circumstances. Peter Canisius stemmed the tide. Uh, he did it by preaching. He would, he would preach in the, um, uh, the cathedrals in Germany. Uh, he was brilliant at uh, apologetics. Um, at that time, Let's see, the, the idea was, um, let's see, this is a, I found a quote from uh, uh, Ann Carroll, right, the, the wife of Warren Carroll, Christendom uh, University, or College. She says in her book, Christ the King, Lord of History, uh, Protestantism had made much headway in Germany uh, because it was adopted by the intellectual elite. Uh, because those, those ones who were uh, very bright and brilliant, they saw, again, it's about power. We can control what people think. If you don't believe in Protestantism, if you don't accept this, it's because you're too stupid to understand this is superior to the church. And they're, they're preying upon the ignorance of the, pez the peasants, right? The poor people, many of them couldn't read. They hadn't been well catechized. They were made to feel like if you believe in the Catholic Church, you're stupid, you're ignorant, you're unenlightened. Does that sound familiar? Right? So the old, old, old trick in the book, some things never change. Uh, so Peter Canisius was instrumental because he went in and he gave people what they needed. He would teach the catechism and it would show from scripture, from history, from the fathers, uh, the Catholic Church is superior to, the Catholic theology is superior to Protestant theology. Protestant theology is weak. It doesn't have a foundation in scripture. Um, and he showed that, he proved that by his argumentation, by his writings, uh, by his preaching and sermons and so on. Now, as always, right, um, this is part of, part of what it means. Unless a grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it cannot bear fruit. Unless a man, like Peter Canisius or anybody, is willing to sacrifice time and effort, is willing to give part of their life to training others, it's not going to grow. Peter Canisius spent time. He founded seminaries. He founded colleges. He brought in curriculum. He, he taught young men the truths of the faith. He taught them how to fight against Protestantism, and they did. Uh, he, he became the first provincial superior of the Jesuits uh, in Germany, and he expanded the order. Uh, he trained up these Jesuits, he trained these young men, put them through seminary, uh, got them ordained, and sent them out. And that's how they stemmed the tide. Um, he would do this for 20 years in Germany, and then he went and he did it for 20 years in Fribourg, Switzerland. And he, he would travel all over, but there, he founded a college in Fribourg, uh, St. Michael's College, and it's still there today, still famous, sadly no longer Catholic. It's still run by the Jesuits, but it's just not, it's not Catholic. Uh, neither is m most any Jesuit university, anyways. Um, so he, he, would, he would just do the same thing, right? He would teach, he would preach, he would write letters, treatises. And many of us don't know this. Uh, there's the, uh, St. Peter Canisius' catechism uh, for children. We're used to the Baltimore Catechism, which is based on Trent. Uh, St. Peter Canisius, he wrote a, a very simple catechism. It just never got popularity here in the U.S., uh, but it's still popular in Europe. And um, the Baltimore Catechism has four sections. It's the Apostles' Creed, which deals with dogma, um, the Ten Commandments, you know, dealing with, with those and morality, the sacraments, and then the Our Father, dealing with prayer. Peter Canisius had two sections. He had um, what you should know and what you should do, what to believe, how to behave. Very simple, those two sections. Uh, so he, he would write it in three volumes. It was basically truths of the faith, um, um, uh, you know, right Catholic living, and he added a third um, sacraments on the sacraments. So that's the Canisian uh, catechism, and he, would, he, he initially wrote it for college students, those young men who were, were studying and, um, uh, to become priests. Then he modified it for children, so anybody uh, could read it. Uh, so again, like I said, he did this for uh, 40 years. He was involved in this efforts, and uh, due to his um, uh, uh, efforts, 
um, large parts like the central and southern Germany uh, were saved for the faith. I mean, you go to Bavaria today, they're still Catholic. You see these crucifixes, uh, these little scenes along the side of the road, just driving along, there they are. So Bavaria, southern Germany is still very Catholic. Um, and in fact, uh, Poland is still, uh, you know, everything is Poland. Yeah, they're very Catholic because of St. Peter Canisius. They were almost entirely converted to Protestantism. He, he, by the, his efforts and the men he sent in, uh, he won them back, back to the faith, Poland. Um, and yet his approach was very, uh, very um, moderate. You, you know, you have sometimes these people that are too intellectual and they're, they're too much on principle and theory and they don't understand human nature. Peter Kinesis had it both. Here's, he got into a, a, kind of a, a letter writing fight back and forth with, with, with um, uh, Rome or these other, these other uh, churchmen. And they wanted, they wanted a heavy handed approach. They wanted condemnation of the heretics. Peter Kinesius on the ground talking to people, he knew this wasn't gonna work. And he says um, is in one of his letters, uh, if you treat them the right way, the Germans will give you everything. Many of them err in matters of faith, but without arrogance. They err in the German way, mostly honest, a bit simple-minded, uh, and unfortunately very open for everything Lutheran. An honest explanation of the faith will be much more effective than a polemic attack against the reformers. He said that attacks against John Calvin, uh, Luther, and the like, he says, with words like these, we don't cure patients, we make them incurable. So that, that's the truth of apologetics we, that we all need to realize. Most people um, with their troubles, it's either it's an intellectual mistake or it might be an emotional problem. They, they have an emotional block. And if you don't, if you don't re realize that and you go to uh, approach too hard, um, you're gonna turn people off. They're, not gonna, they're gonna feel offended and you've lost them. You gotta win the heart uh, and then you can win the mind. And that, that's why if you're dealing with somebody, you have to know, are they sincere? If they're sincere, you have the heart. You can argue with the mind, but you gotta you got make that distinction first. Uh, one of the ways he was uh, able uh, to, to accomplish all these efforts was his devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, he was very devoted to her and said that of all the paths to our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the path of the Blessed Virgin was the, uh, was the best, was the best way. And before the Hail Mary had been fully solidified in its current form, uh, it was just, at the first part, the Hail Mary was just the salutation of the angel Gabriel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Like, that was it. Uh, Peter Canisius added, pray for us sinners. Uh, 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 yes, and pray for uh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, is what he added in his catechism. Um, its current form came from Pius V, right, the Dominican Pope, in the 1500s. Uh, but Peter Canisius was, was promoting uh, very much Marian devotion, and uh, that's how he was able to accomplish his efforts, was through her intercessions. Uh, he finally, he, he uh, suffered a stroke in 1591. That left him partially paralyzed. He kept working for another five, six years, eventually died uh, at the age of, um, would have been near 70 years old, in 1597. Uh, so as I mentioned, over the course of 40 years of labor, uh, saved entire countries uh, from falling into heresy. So uh, it's so important to know about these saints of the past because how did we receive the faith that we have? I mean, how many of you here are of German descent? How many of you here are po of Polish descent? Where would you be if he hadn't converted your great, 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 great grandmother, grandfather? What, where would you be without his efforts, right? That is a thing that we, we so often, we complain um, how could I say this? We complain about the state of the world today, like I can't believe we're in this position and why aren't the bishops doing something and you know, we got handed this, this, these troubles and I didn't cause these troubles in the church. That's right, but you didn't preach the faith 500 years ago either, right? We got the faith now because somebody else did the work to give it to us. So if, if we're gonna benefit from the work other people did 500 years ago, don't complain about the, 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 um, uh, the sins of people 500 years ago. Like we have our job right now. This is what we have. This is where we are. Thanks be to God we have the faith. Thanks be to God we know that we have to work. We should be the ones to work. We should be the ones to convert large sections of the United States, right? Uh, of Denver, of wherever we are. That ought to be our, our focus. I, need, I have the faith. I want to share it. What's the best way to share it? Your life, your action, who you are, how you behave, how you think, how you speak, how you dress. Everything about us should be Catholic, not overtly, right? Not that in your face, but quietly so that people ask us over time, you're different than everybody else I know, what is it? 
Like, and hopefully they've seen us making the sign of the cross. And so they say, you know, what is, you're Catholic. Why does it make so different? I want to know about the faith. That's how we're going to convert people interiorly first. Uh, so there are, these are troublesome times where we're not racked by, um, uh, you know, what was it physical war, but there is warfare in the world right now. I would say we are in World War III. It's been going on. It's an information war. It's a war for souls. Uh, it's a great battle. We can do something about it. We can pray. We can give a good example. Uh, we can be like Peter Canisius, uh, lay down our life for others, uh, not do maybe so much what I want to do, what I'm interested in, but ask God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to spend my time for others, uh, teaching them the faith, uh, bringing them salvation? Uh, St. Peter Canisius, pray for us. God bless you all. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.